Welcome back to Sendestin Studios. I'm your host, Darius Nathan, and today we jump into the Fairlight page on DaVinci Resolve. Now, in the last tutorial, I didn't go too much in depth on the Fairlight page. I know it can get pretty intense, but we'll dedicate this entire video to the Fairlight page to give you guys a better understanding of mixing, mastering, or giving you guys a better understanding of the tools in the overall Fairlight page. So when we do, we'll do a lot of that stuff. You guys already know where it's at. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. All right, guys, so we are in DaVinci Resolve now. We have our timeline open and we are in the media pool on one of the tabs on the Fairlight page. Now, I will go over the tabs up top first just to give you guys an overview of what the tabs can do and what they're used for. First off, we have the media pool. It's importing, starting time lighting, exporting media, going through, organizing media, just organizing your media, making sure you have all the media you need when editing. Next, we have our effects. This is just the audio effects. This gives you different things you can do the audio, add the gain, clip, limiter, monitor, a lot of stuff that you can do for the effects. These just go on to the audio clip or you can put them on the track or the bus. So these effects can go on any layer of the audio. So again, you can go on the clip layer, it can go on the track layer or it can go on the bus layer. Let's go ahead and move on to the index. Now the index, this allows you to make a mark. So if we take our timeline and put a mark right there and say first mark. Now look, we can go over here, come back over here and we can jump to the first mark. If we had a track in here, we would, we would be able to jump into the track as well. But since there's no track, we just have the, or there's tracks, but since there's no audio, we just have the tracks here. We can also go ahead and record from here, solo out. We can mute it. We can check and see if there's any automation. What format? So this is in 2.0, so that means it's gonna be a stereo format and it's just categories if you have them. And then here's your actual ID for each track, A1, B1, and then audio name. And then we can hide it or unhide it on here as well. We also have the index edits. So if you have different edits within the same track, you can jump in on those here as well. Just another way to get around on the timeline. Let's go ahead and jump over to groups. Now with the groups, let's get rid of that one. Groups allows you to group multiple tracks together. So if I add another track, we'll add a mono track. So now we have a audio two and an audio one. Audio two and audio one. It's gonna select everything though. So let's go ahead and if we create a new one, we're gonna take this one and this one over there. And then we can change the name to, I don't know, group one, I guess. Everything that is checked is what the group settings will be adjusted. So if we go ahead and adjust the arm on any of the tracks, it will not adjust the group because it is not checked within the group. You can always set it as default. Here is all your channels. On the right side is all the channels within the group. And then the arrows in the middle allows you to move them back and forth within the group and, without, and then outside of the group. Let's go ahead and save that. All right, as you can see, we got our new group here now. And if we here, this allows us to select them and deselect them, which enables the group to be working as a group. So if you just want to make changes to one track, but it's inside the group, you can click this and then turn the group off and make those changes. Turn it back on and then all the group will change together. Here, you can select. This allows you to select the tracks within a group. Here, you can delete it with the little trash can and then we can go to the settings and go back to our settings and change anything if needed or add other tracks to our group. But let's go ahead and close that and jump over to our sound library. Now, the sound library is a little, it's a little different to understand. If you haven't set up the sound library just yet, I would recommend pressing the button in the middle. It should take you through like a little quick setup. But if you already have it set up, I'll show you what you can do and how to get some of the sounds in here because it looks like you don't have anything right now. So up top is where you will, these buttons up here allow you to change how the icons and the sounds are viewed. Right here is the search. We have the filter so we can filter by name or description. And then we have which sound library you're looking at. I have a local database and then I have a Fairlight sound database. We're gonna use the Fairlight sound database. And then here, this is kind of where you'll see your waveform. This is the uh, effects or the sound timeline, your playbacks and your loop. Here is where you can set the sync point. So say you want the 
sound to start in the middle right here where the playhead is, then you can tell it, okay, I want the sync point to be here in the middle of the waveform. And then when you place it on the track, this is where that sync point should line up at. And that's how you line up the sync points and everything within the clip. Audition allows you to place this out inside of your tracks over here, but it's not permanent. It just allows you to hear it, audition it, hint, hint, the word audition, allows you to audition the sound as soon as you move the track or you move something within the actual project, then it's just gonna jump back out until you press confirm or cancel. Now, if we do three asterisks, it will pop up all the sounds within that sound project. So looking at it, you can see, whoa, there's a lot of sounds and everything's popping up now. You can also, you should also be able to see this. So if we click it, we can hear different sounds. Really cool, kind of loud. If it is too loud over here, you can press the dim. It drops it down by um, negative 15 decibels. So it should be a bit quieter. And then we can also use this to continue to drop down the decibels if needed. So that is how you go ahead and check in the tracks. And if you want, you can always just drag and drop, move them over, zoom in, voila. And we're good to go. So let's go ahead and move on to the next group. We have the ADR. So this allows you to record a sound. So say you want to do some ADR and you want to have some text talk pop up on the screen. Here's a lot of the settings to get that all set up. So say we wanted to add a character, we can add that. And then we have our microphone set up on track one. So let's move this down to track two. And then you can look down here, there's just more settings. So if you wanted to beep in, there's some beep settings here, level negative 15 decibels because we have dim on. If we take dim off, it may change, but since we already have it on, we'll leave it there. And then this one as well. And then you have different things. You have the count in, you have the video streamer. You can tell it what colors you want to have on there. Smart timeline. So different things, different kind of settings you can use when going over ADR. Here you can start your recording. If you have a specific character you're working on or have a specific dialogue that you're working on, you can do different takes and multiple takes over here. Keep recording, stop recording, or record different takes. You can do that all here. And then the list is a list of dialogues that you're trying to complete. So if I have a new queue, I guess I should have added the characters and everything first. So let's delete this. Let's say hello everyone. Or let's say hello world. Hello world. And I cannot. There we go. And then since we added that character back over here in setup, dad, go over here, add dad, and then that's our queue. So now we know if I bring up my meters, it says hello world right there, when we're gonna do the overview and we have a spot to read and do our ADR recording as well. Now let's go ahead and close ADR. Let's talk about our mixer. So here we have our mixer. I can close the meters for now as well. This pretty much gives you the same as most of these tabs as well. So if you wanna add any effects, add any input. So right here, input. We can tell it we want microphones within this actual audio track. Below it, we have voice isolation. We have the dialogue. We have different ways we can order our effects, dynamics, and uh, EQs. Below that, we have the effects, just like the effects tab, but just another drop down that we can use to get everything up in there a little bit quicker. Effects in, and then we probably have our effects out as well, or bust in, bust out. Those are different places you can send the sound before it leaves for your last bus. Let's see, you have your pan. This is the bus out. VCA, the group that it's in right now, you can see it's in all, because all of these tracks are in the group that was labeled all. And then we have the name of the tracks and everything like that. You can also record solo and mute the track from here. Check and see if there's any automation and then handle the actual volume controls. Now, if you see these volume controls, why are they all moving at the same time? It's because we're in that group. Now, if you go over here, press that, I can move it alone, and then it doesn't act like a group. That's just a hint for you guys, just a little quick tip. Now, let's jump over into the meters. This is just another spot where you can look and see how your levels are, the loudness, the control, uh, the control room, 
this is your actual, I guess your highest peak. Over here you have your loudest meters. This is depending on any standard that you wanted to go off of. So if you want to go off of the Netflix standard, the YouTube standard, the Disney standard. I want to say this one is the US standard, I believe. And then maybe a European standard. There's a lot of standards in here. These are just the loudest standards when it comes to exporting your video. So if you're exporting to YouTube, best bet, just put it under YouTube and it'll tell you if your loudest is within correct levels for YouTube. Over here we also have our little viewer within the audio mix or audio interface, Fairlight. This is our show, our tracker controls. So if we want to use these to pan the sound around, we can do that as well. And this is just a floating video or picture in picture. More of your buses, you can see the two tracks that you have over here, your bus, or just the two audio tracks, and then you have the bus as well right over here. So that's pretty much it for the mixer. Most of this is just a kind of place where you can look and see what's going on with the sound, check and see if all the peaks are looking good, and as well as look over here for any red numbers. That means that's too loud. But that's pretty much it for the uh, meters. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Metadata is just the data that comes in with the video. So if you're on a clip or something like that, it'll just give you the metadata, how long something is, start frame, end frame, frame, uh, shot frame rate. It's just a lot more information that you can look at from the from when the cap from when the clip was recorded. There we go. A lot more metadata, and then an inspector, all your settings for that specific clip. Volume, pan, AI, voice isolation, dialogue leveler, music remixer, picture, just a little bit of everything. We also have the equalizer down here as well. Um, with the studio version, I get the six band equalizer. I believe with the regular, um, the non-studio version of DaVinci Resolve, it's the four band. So I get the two extra ones just because I'm on studio, but you guys still have the equalizer. The equalizer still there, you can still use it. So that's pretty much it for, and then we have some other things down here to look at too. More of just metadata. This, the file is just more metadata, honestly. Right here we can see more waveforms. We can play through it. And that's about it for the inspector, just more tools and tips and settings that you can use. Now, if we look down here in our actual timeline area, we have all of our tracks that we've been using, audio one, audio two, still record, solo, mute. These are levelers. We have our lock track. We have a lot of stuff. This is our meters as well that we can use to judge how loud our uh, audio is. Now, going over some of the tools at the top, Right underneath the tabs that we just went over, you have your time code, you have whatever timeline you're working in or project you're working in. To the right of that, you have all the playbacks. So uh, reverse, play forward, play, stop, record. You have your loop, you have your toggle automation, and then you have your automation control. So these are just controls used for automation. And then you can turn off automation. If you turn off automation, it also hides that bottom bus as well. Now here we have our pointer mode. Pointer mode is just a regular tool that allows you to pick clips or select clips like this. This is our range tool. The range tool allows you to set a specific range. So this is your in and out. If you have the loop tool on, it would only select or only play through these in and out points, as you can see. And then if we click onto the pointer, it'll keep those in and out points. So if we try to click anywhere else, it doesn't let us. Now moving on to this guy, the focus mode. This is just a, you can say it's a mixture of both the pointer and the range as it lets us select a range, but it also allows us to like pick a specific range that we want, or we can just click on it as well. Go back to that, I'll lock it in so nothing moves. So those are just different ways that you can use the different pointer tools that you can use. I use the focus tool a lot because it just, I mean, it's pretty quick. If I want to select something or just select something like that, I can select multiple clips or just select a specific in and out point, which is nice. Now we have our um, razor, which is the same old, just cuts the clip, control B. Snapping tool allows you to snap the I, or the snap the sounds to a specific point in the end of a clip to a marker to the time or the CTI the playhead 
Then we have the link. This allows you to link clips together or just to see if clips are linked together. It'll highlight if there are, I believe. Next, we have the flags and the markers. These are just things you can use to identify specific locations within your track or your timeline that you can jump to. Like I said, we're able to use this for the groups as well. Or, I'm sorry, not the groups, but we're able to use this for index and then the markers for the first marker that I played. So I could just jump to that now since I've already had that marker down. Next, we have the, see if I can get this one right, transient detection. So what this does is it looks over the actual waveform and it detects the highs and lows pretty much. So it tells you where it's quiet, where it's not quiet. It's, this may be a studio feature, it may not be as well, but yes. So this just allows you to detect the quiet parts of the video. Kind of like if you go to here, oh, I guess it's only an edit, but if you show beats, it'll give you like different lines where the beats are. This is the same thing, but it'll show you where the quiet parts are like in between the quiet and the highs are, those parts. Kind of weird to explain, it's not giving you the high, it's not giving you the low, but it's giving you the part in between them. So if we look at this right here, our just part is moving around with the range tool and it would honestly give us, let me move the playhead right here. Okay, so it would give us a mark right here and maybe right here, just in between those spots at the very lowest midpoint. I don't know. It's 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 helpful to use once you get once you get an understanding of it. But that is the transient detection. Let's see. We already went over this. This is just kind of your playback audio. This doesn't really change the audio for your timeline when you export it, but just the playback when you're listening to it in your project, if that makes any sense. So this is our in project timeline or volume that we can use to turn things down. Dim automatically sets things at negative 15 if it's already too loud and you have more control of it over here. Now, other than that, I want to say that's pretty much everything for the Fairlight page. I really just wanted to give you guys a quick overview. I know I didn't go over too much last time in the previous video since we were doing a complete overview for uh, DaVinci Resolve 20. This is just a really quick Fairlight overview for you guys so you can get a better understanding of what the tools do and how to use the tools within this uh, program. So until then, I'll see you guys in the next video where we can jump into some cool stuff, start making some videos. Just wanted to get these tutorials out the way. So there you have it, the Fairlight page. I know it's a lot, it can be overwhelming, so that's why I just wanted to give you guys an understanding of the tools. So when we do start to use it, you're not overwhelmed trying to understand what each thing is doing. You can go back to this if you ever need to. And remember, I do have a Discord channel, Sendescent Studios, it's the same thing as on YouTube. But you guys can go there, check out our PDFs. We have a PDF of this tutorial going over the exact same pages and the exact same panels that I did in this video. So if you guys want a better understanding or just to read through it, throw it into some AI, ask it questions then you can do that as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, drop your questions down below. I'll answer them. Find us over in the Discord. Until the next one, I'll see you guys later.